we're starting to see an association with artwork in global contemporary work in particular is this inclusion of modern technology, in particular um, digital technology as well as things like televisions and lights. So Namjoon Paik was born in Seoul in 1932. He actually studied music for a time before he started creating these multimedia installations. So right around the 1980s, he started becoming particularly famous worldwide for creating these massive structures comprised of dozens of television sets. So <laughs> um, up until around the late 90s, most televisions were very blocky things. Um, they projected back into the wall. Flat, flat screens were not really a thing until the late 90s and early 2000s, and even then they were extremely expensive. So this piece actually pr um, goes back quite a ways. The televisions are quite blocky. So in this particular work, neon lights are outlining each of the con con um, continental United States. Um, Alaska and Hawaii are on the side walls of this installation. This particular installation actually um, was installed in a gallery in New York. So each state has a different video feed for the televisions that are within its borders. And those video feeds correspond with the state's unique kind of like televised mythology. So for example, California's broadcast is represented by the show The O.C. And Kansas is represented by The Wizard of Oz. So the video feed for New York State is actually connected to a camera that's inside of the installation. So the spectators actually become a part of the piece. So um, because again, the installation is taking place in New York City, the viewer then sees themselves inside of the New York broadcast here. So the title is particularly significant for this piece. It's called Electronic Superhighway. So this Electronic Superhighway is referring to electronic communication, especially around the late 80s, early 90s. We're starting to see the emergence of the World Wide Web um, and global communication. So um, this um, notion of connecting the world through technology is referenced by using this image of a map. So typically a map is showing ways that like communities are connecting to one another um, and particular in like roads and highways transporting goods and people whereas like in the modern era it's TVs and computers that are connecting people across these vast distances and with extreme haste. So at this point in time, TVs and home computers are becoming more widely available. A flat screen television in the 90s could cost up to $5,000. Nowadays, it's relatively get easy to get one for under $500. So it was very expensive to put together these kinds of installations. Here's a couple of other works by Nam June Paik. He oftentimes uses um, aspects of Eastern culture in his works as well. This is one of my favorites. It's called Golden Buddha, and it's basically like a camera feed of a Buddha statue staring at itself. There's also various elements of graffiti on the statue. Here's another statue um, that creates this like robot called TV is kitsch. Again, we're having that theme of kitsch emerging over and over again in global contemporary art. Our next work also incorporates video. Um, this piece is called The Crossing by Bill Viola. Um, so he was another pioneer of video installation art. So this installation actually involved two videos that were projected on this hanging tapestry in a dark room. So there is one video shown on one side um, and then another video shown on the other. There's also four speakers inside of the room of the installation. So in both of the videos, we kind of have this parallel narrative of a figure walking forward, being engulfed in some sort of element, and then the figure disappears. So on one side, there's a flame that begins at the figure's feet and quickly engulfs them, and when the fire subsides, the man is gone. On the other side, which is portrayed here, um, the water falls in the figure's head and turns into this downpour, and then when the water turns into a steady drip, then the figure is gone as well. 
so these videos repeat in perpetuity and they're in very slow motion. I actually have a video on one of the next slides that shows the um, both videos side by side and slows them down. So these videos are intended by the in the artist's words to incite a meditative state. Um, when you slow something down, you have um, like all the details magnified, you're able to pay more attention to things that would otherwise pass you by very quickly. Um, so there's really this intention to reforge a connection between the religious and artistic experiences that are inherent in lots of other religiously charged artworks. Instead of something that is supposed to pass you by very quickly and be a very passive experience, these um, videos are intended to be an active experience. These screens are also larger than life. They're 12 feet tall. So you can imagine that when you're a person that's about this tall, um, interacting with this exhibit that it's very immersive in nature. So there's also this religious connection um, manifesting as the cycle of purification and destruction. We saw this um, cycle represented in works like Shiva as Lord of Dance. So remember that piece where um, the dude is basically like in this dance pose and he's creating and destroying the universe simultaneously. There's also an allusion to um, this biblical flood narrative in the water side of the piece. Um, around this time, too, there were lots of Buddhist protests where a lot of like Buddhist monks would actually set themselves on fire um, as a form of protest against the Chinese government. So that narrative is also reflected in the um, parallel narrative on the other side of the screen where the fire engulfs the figure. So here is a, um, some screen captures of both of these sides. If you'd like to see the video um, of this narrative, um, I've also included it in the PowerPoint. So Bill Viola's work um, oftentimes involves these um, kind of like parallel narratives that are happening simultaneously. This triptych, so we've seen this word before, it's basically um, some sort of artwork that involves three separate pieces, has this narrative of like birth, um, kind of like the state of limbo, you could probably consider it life given the um, age of the figure and then this narrative of like a deathbed. So this um, video on the left basically is a woman giving birth to a baby. Um, the second one is this figure that's floating in water and then the last one is this person that is on a ventilator and is presumably on their deathbed. Our third piece of the day is Pure Land by Mariko Mori. Um, she is a Japanese artist. She involves lots of Eastern narratives in her work. So this photographic piece right here is intended to be a still version of a multimedia installation piece called Nirvana. So this piece, um, this installation was very multi-sensory. Basically um, what happened is that viewers would go into a gallery, there'd be about 20 to 25 people at a time that would go into this room and um, wearing 3D glasses. And when they went into this room, there would be this video projected. Um, there would be um, sounds coming out of the walls and there were actually scents that were wafted over the audience with the fans. So they're seeing um, and smelling things. And like when they're seeing things as well, it, they're kind of projecting forward. So as the name suggests, the installation was meant to be this immersive and meditative experience. You'll recall this term nirvana from when we covered East Asian art, meaning basically um, the Buddha's achievement of like freeing himself from the attachment of earthly things. So um, Mori right here is recreating the Amida Buddha. So this is a canonized Buddha scene where he ascends with his bodhisattvas um, and he carries devoted Buddhists to the pure land of perfect bliss, or um, nirvana. So Mori um, has actually dressed herself here um, as Kichi Jotun, who is this Hindu-inspired figure that appears in East Asian Buddhism, and she's identifiable by carrying this wishing wheel or hoju in one hand, and she's also accompanied by various lotus motifs. So you'll oftentimes see um, figures in Eastern Buddhism that are influenced by 
um, kind of like these Indian deities that of course have an Eastern twist. So in Nirvana, like the installation piece, the alien figures are zooming around on clouds and playing instruments. So these little um, CGI aliens are just like numing around and chilling. And they're basically meant to represent Mori's bodhisattvas. So remember that bodhisattvas are these little helpers. They're people that have achieved Nirvana, but they stick around um, in the mortal realms to help other people achieve Nirvana. So Kichi Jyotin is oftentimes regarded as the essence of beauty and the harbinger of prosperity. She's a good omen. Um, her well grants wishes and repels evil, which is apotropaic. Um, the artist is basically making herself the Amida Buddha as well as Kichi Jyotin. So it's this kind of composite narrative. So, and in doing this, she is creating a paradise of her own making. She has this um, sprawling, expansive landscape that's very peaceful um, and creates this sense of limitlessness. And she's like creating this sense of happiness and bliss by having all these aliens zooming around. So Mariko Mori actually has a background in modeling and costume design, and she will oftentimes, very much like Cindy Sherman, like dress and pose herself into her installations. This is a very common feature of postmodern um, feminist artwork in particular. So um, Mariko Mori has done several installation type works. She's also created several videos, many of which um, create these Buddhist and Hindu narratives. Um, she's also incorporated elements of Eastern culture and this like element of cyberpunk in particular into her artwork. 